I'm Java students. In today's video, we're going to talk about the idea of objects. How are they involved in your project? How should I be using them throughout the game? There's likely some for loops that we'll need to do an array list of those objects. So let's talk about it. The nitty gritty of what's going on here. All right, so currently I've got a game created and all I have in this game is a player. So right now I've got variables to represent the player's position, uh, size, and speed that I create and initialize inside of setup. Then inside of my draw method, I fill with a color for my player, which is a rectangle. And then if I'm pressing any of the keys, I can make my player move. So currently when I run my program, the only thing that I should see on my screen is this red rectangle that I can move around with my arrow keys. Ideally, in the end, I would like to have some food that my player can eat. Now, that might be different than your game. I want you to think about like, okay, what's the main thing? And then what might be the object? What is there gonna be many of on my screen? So whatever I have many of, that's what's gonna become my object. So in my game, I'm gonna have a bunch of little food particles that I wanna see on my screen. So in order to do that, I need to make an object to represent that food. So I went ahead and did just the basics of creating an object. I made another class, I named it. I've literally called my object, object in this case. My object is gonna hold three variables, a location and a size. So then I made a constructor so that, that way I can set all three of those variables. And that's all my object has in its function right now. My, uh, my food objects are not going to move. They are not going to do anything else so far. So this is all that they need. Later on, we may want to have them be able to check collisions and things like that. But that's in a different video. Right now, I just want to think about how do I get this object to actually show up on my screen. So I've got this object. That's great. So now in my main class, I could go over and I could make a singular object that I'll call F1 to represent food one. And I could give it some values. I could say F1 is a new object. It's gonna have an X position of 400, a Y position of 200, and it's gonna be of size 40, let's just say. And then this creates my object. This places numbers to each of those variables. But if I run my program right now, I haven't actually done anything to draw the food, so nothing has changed so far. I've created more variables, but that's about it. So then in my game, I would also have to say, well, let's fill with, I don't know, let's make my food blue or green, I guess, in that case. Oops, no S there. And then we'll draw an ellipse that's at f1.x, f1.y, f1.size twice, because it is a circle. Okay, now when I run my program, I should see my rectangle and I should also see my green ellipse. This is because I've actually done the part where I draw it. So I have to do that part. Now, imagine in my game, I don't want to have just one food object. I really want to have tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of those food objects. So in order to make that happen, well, I need to have a lot of them. So let's make a lot of food objects rather than listing them all out like this and keeping track of each food object separately this is going to again create a lot of code just like we had when we did graphics previously instead of creating each object individually instead i would love to make an array list to hold all of those objects for me so mine is an array list holding the data type called object because that's the name of my object this would be whatever yours is called ball circle food whatever you're choosing to call it and so I'm gonna call this object list. That's the name of my array list. So that's creating the variable just like we say int x. Then inside of setup, we're gonna say like x equals 10. And the way that we say that when we're talking about our array list is object list equals new array list. Okay, so now I've made this array list. So then rather than creating this f1 variable, instead I just want to add to my object list the new object that I had from before. So rather than assigning all of this information to a variable called F1, we're gonna say, hey, object list, go put this first object at position zero in your list. Then I could repeat this process. Now, if I wanted to, if I needed very specific positions for each of my shapes, I could do something like this over and over and over again to get the exactly specific positions. Now, if those specific positions that you're thinking about happen to be a grid, go check out the other video about how to make a grid of shapes using for loops there. 
Uh, but if you have very specific positions that are not a grid, you have to be very particular. You can go ahead and just add all of your objects at the beginning of your game, just like this. However, for me right now, now this would all happen inside of setup to add those objects to that list. However, for me right now, I don't actually care where these objects are to begin with. I just need them on the screen. So I'm going to put them in random positions on my screen. So rather than creating each one individually, wouldn't it be so nice to tell my computer and say like, hey, create, I don't know, 35 objects with random positions. And the answer is yes, that would be so nice and we actually know how to do that. The way that we're gonna do that is we're gonna make a for loop. So I'm gonna make a for loop that I know I just want to go 35 times. We know how to do that part. So now I've got a for loop that'll loop over itself 35 times. That's the creating 35 of them. Then what I want to do inside is create 35 random objects. Now, I don't mean to do that 35 inside of the for loop. I want to create one for each given for loop. So I'm going to take this line of code and I'm going to put it inside of the for loop. And I'm going to delete these because we're going to get 35 just by doing that. Now, if I do it just like this, I'm going to get 35 objects that all have this position. So right now, even though I've got a for loop with hard-coded numbers there, I'm only going to see, oops, sorry, I forgot to delete some other stuff. I'm not going to see anything different in this moment. Sorry, we'll view it in just a minute. We've gotten rid of F1, but then I'm still trying to draw things at F1. So this for loop, it works, but I've got the same position for every single object. They're all at 400, 200 with a size of 40. So that's not super helpful to me. What would be more helpful is if these were at a random position. So I went ahead and made a method called randint. I'm going to make my random number to be from 50 to 550. And I'm going to do that for both the X and the Y position. And then they're all going to have a size of 40. Okay, so now I've got truly random positions, 35 objects in my list. So if I were to Let's comment out these two lines for a moment so that we can get our program to run. If I were to run this program, I'm just going to, in the console, print out object list dot size. It'll show me that I have 35 objects sitting in that list. So it'll print over and over and over again, 35. Now remember, I still don't see them on the screen. All I've done is put them into my object list. So that's the first for loop inside of setup is to put our objects into our list. So that's what that, that, that did. Uh, create 35 objects from random positions and add them to the object list. Then, if we actually want them to show up on the screen, we have to do this part of the functionality where we draw them. So in this way, now would be the time to draw those ellipses. So I could go into my, uh, I could go into my list and say things like this. So let's uncomment out these lines first. I could say instead of f1.x, remember that's no longer uh, an object that I care about using in any way. Instead of saying f1.x, I could go into my object list. I could get, whoops, I could get the zero with thing and draw it at the x position. I could go into my object list get that zero with object and draw its y position. I could go into my object list, get the zero with thing and draw its size. And I could do that again because I need the size twice. Now that is long and ugly and imagine having to do that 35 times over where all you're doing is changing that number. So I could then repeat this process, do this again, and the only thing that I would change here, oops, let's turn that number into a one. Now go get the next thing in the list. And then I would do this again. And the only thing that I would change is now go get the next thing in the list. So if you're noticing, I'm doing the same line of code. The only thing I'm changing is the number that goes in there. So rather than writing this line over and over and over again, wouldn't it be so nice to loop over the list and only have to write this line of code one time? And the answer is yes, it would be so nice. So now, inside of here, we are instead going to loop over the list of objects, the one that's called object list, 
to draw each object. And also, if my objects had any function, this is where I would perform their functions. For me right now, my objects don't, but that's how that's gonna go. So we want a loop that's gonna go over the length of the object list. So this time I'm gonna create a, a for loop Starts at zero, but this time it's going to go up until the size of object list. And I'm leaving that as a variable in case I change how many objects I'm going to have. Then inside of there, I want to do this fill command, and I'm actually going to take all of this code. I want to do that fill command. So now, rather than saying get zero, then get one, then get two, the for loop's already doing that incrementing for me of i is zero, then i is one, then i is two. So I could just say, get i in each of these situations. And then I don't need these other lines because for then my first line of the for loop, it'll go get the zero with. And then for the next line of my for loop, it'll get the first, and then the second, and then the third, and so on. However, this is a little bit uh, wonky as far as code is concerned. And it also then requires that every time I say object list dot get. So the only way that I'm going to do anything to improve this code, it actually adds in another line, is I want to momentarily like call this something. I want this very this to be a variable for me, so that that way every time I don't have to say object list dot get i. That's kind of a mouthful. So I'm going to create an object variable that's a placeholder that I call cur, and that's where I'm going to go get the next object. So that's where I'm going to go get i. So then this way, I can say like cur.x, cur.y, and then cur.size. So it's shortening a little bit of what it is that I would write inside of the commands. And it also then allows me to be able to say things down below. Like let's say I had an option of cur.move. I don't, but let's pretend that I did in my game. Then I would be able to call that method, or I could do more functions down below using that variable name cur. Now, cur is a placeholder. Remember, it's only representing the current object that we've gotten. It's going to change with every loop of the for loop. So it's just a way of sh like cleaning up that code just a little bit. So now, when I run this program, I should see my rectangle and all of those food ellipses, just like I do there. So in the end, I have two different for loops, one inside of setup that helps me create all those objects. Likely you will have something like this, but depending on how your game goes, maybe you won't. Maybe you will have this for loop existing somewhere else to create objects. And then you definitely will need a for loop inside of draw to literally make those objects appear on the screen. Fill with their color, draw the ellipse, put the image there, whatever it's going to be. But that's a quick rundown of how your objects will be involved in your project.